This event, it, it is new. Uh, before, we used to use a mobilized kitchen trailer. We used residuals, which uh, basically we're coming up with a gourmet meal from ingredients that we would normally find when we would deploy or go into the field. Uh, this year, they did something a little bit different. We're actually using a containerized kitchen, which is a little bit larger, has more equipment, such as refrigerators and ovens. But we are doing a restaurant-style meal, which uh, we're doing a three-course meal. Uh, appetizer, entree, and dessert, and we're not being graded on the service, but we are being graded on every aspect of the cooking, plus the tasting. Cramped inside this containerized kitchen, Sergeant Adrian Carrion and his team from Fort Bliss, Texas, prepared an ambitious gourmet meal at the 34th U.S. Army Culinary Arts Competition held at Fort Lee, Virginia. Our menu today consists of braised wreck of lamb with uh, potatoes and uh, roasted vegetables. That's gonna be our, our main course. One kitchen over, Staff Sergeant Michael Bogle and his Fort Seal, Oklahoma team whipped up their own signature dishes. This is potato gnocchi. Uh, what I did is I made the potato dough, which is here. Then I boil it, then I put it in an ice bath, and then I put it here. And right before I serve, I will uh, saute it off in butter and parsley. All the while adjusting to the challenges of these tight quarters. That's the big, that's the big one. Space, heat, it's, it's not really what you'd use in a kitchen. In a kitchen you have regular ovens, regular stove tops. Here you have these uh, water burner units, which, which are, uh, you know, kind of almost like jet engines. Grab it up! A few short hours later, time was up to plate up and serve. You're not competing against anybody, you're competing against the standard but you want to do better than the next team. Some of us have not worked on this particular kitchen, but part of being food service is being able to adapt. I mean, just part of being Army. You gotta be able to adapt and to any situation and overcome and be able to come up with the best meal possible. Let the competition begin. Salt Lake City, Utah, 2008. The first ever American Culinary Federation's Freedom Chef Challenge cook-off. Five two-man teams from each service branch competed side-by-side -side in what organizers called Pentagon Kitchen. They don't know what their main ingredient's gonna be. They knew what some of the common pantry items were gonna be. I mean, you, know, you obviously know you're gonna have butter, cream, flour, sugar, you know, peppers, onions, all of your basic type stuff. And then from there, it was just kind of they're going to show up, see what else they have, what else we reveal to them as a secret ingredients, and then go from there. Coast Guard, Navy, Air Force, Army, Marine, the best of the best are here. They're competing, they're throwing cutting boards, and they only have 31 minutes left before they have to play it up. All dishes, all plates, all... In this Iron Chef type challenge, chefs had to rely solely on their culinary skill and a multi-course meal plan that they could adjust on the fly. We got skirt steak, which is ours. That team over there got tenderloin. I'd rather have the tenderloin because it's a little bit tastier and tender. But, uh, then we just, it's like any other competition, you just go with it, develop what you want with it. Teams were judged on creativity, taste, presentation, and even attitude how much they were able to turn up the heat on the competition. Y'all know what happens in combat. The Army's got to go and the Marines come in and salvage everything. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, hey, are y'all feeling the pressure right now? Huh? I'm still moving the Smack talking is encouraged beyond a shadow of a doubt. I mean, these guys are these guys are the best of the best in the military. I mean, these guys are the top chef. 2008 Armed Forces Chef of the Year, Gunnery Sergeant William Allison admits this food fight was fierce, yet friendly. It's always going to be a professional rivalry because you know, the Army has been premier in food service, and culinary arts in the military for as long as I can remember, for years. Um, and it's so good to be able to at least be in the realm or area that a lot of those great chefs are. So, and for me to be you know, along beside them, uh, it was a really great honor.
good, chef. Yeah, Roger. Erfurt, Germany, 2008. The U.S. Army Culinary Arts Team, or USACAT, competed against dozens of nations for the gold medal. Team Captain Justin Reed was the first U.S. Coast Guardsman to cook on the Army team. I enjoy it. Three times a day, you can make somebody happy. Or you go to a job nine to five and you sit in your cubicle all day. And then, you know, then you go home. You know, you didn't, you didn't help anybody make anybody happy, happy or change, you know, the way they feel about, you know, food that they eat. The chefs prepared a five-star, three-course meal in a field kitchen where conditions were less than cooperative. It was raining in there, actually. It was, constantly, it was. It ruined our chocolate because we had a chocolate open up on the top and it rained down on the chocolate motif for the dessert. Something like plastic so we can make it hard. Hey, it's a competition so precise, so exact, it took the culinary team 24 hours straight to prepare. A combination of staying awake the whole time and paying attention to all the minute details that will cost you points or anything in the long run. And obviously you wouldn't spend the time to cut something like this, but for show work, everything's got to be precise. Because a lot of people, they eat, eat with their eyes first. So if it looks visually appealing, then you know, that's, that's a good first step into, into good cuisine. Once a dish was prepared, the team put on a finishing touch of gelatin glaze to add sheen and preserve the entry. It takes a lot of teamwork to make sure that our, our work is staying consistent and not getting out of hand. We're not rushing it. So he watches me, I watch him. Yes, blanch it. Yep. Call it a day. Blanch it, shark it, call it a day. In the end, the U.S. placed second overall in the military category, winning 13 golds and a silver, and inspiring younger cooks to follow their lead. Yeah, I think that mo motivates them a lot to want to excel, to learn those um, culinary skills so that when they get to their duty stations, that'll be something that they'll be interested in. Some of these guys, it's their first time, and they see that there is a higher level cooking within all branches of service. So now these guys want to work on their certifications, whether it's through the Culinary Institute of America or whether it's through the American Culinary Federation. And actually, the Army is currently working on a uh, accreditation program where we're going to have the uh, cooks uh, get certified. You're going to do better in the outside world, and it makes you feel better about yourself. It makes you feel like your, your skills are, have been tested and, and true. Green beans are raw, and you scorched them, seared them, burnt them. Nestled on a cliff overlooking the scenic Hudson River, so anything I need to know is what we need. sits the main campus of the Culinary Institute of America, or CIA, in Hyde Park, New York. Here, the streets are named for spices, and students staff the school's award winning public restaurants. I am making a chicken consomme. What I put in there was the clarification mixture, um, which takes all the impurities out of the uh, chicken stock that I have in there. It is a mixture of ground chicken with egg whites. Also, it has a mirepoix, which is onions, celery, and carrots. 